people who don't even like my comedy or have never even heard of me saw the outrage and my response to it and went, oh, that's actually funny. Right, right, so right. So it actually right. gained me a lot of fans because yeah. most of the world, I would, I would feel confident in saying the majority of people are sick of this shit. Well, Say the left is so outraged about something, the right instinctually goes, you're being so ridiculous about this. If you hate this, I'm gonna support this because yeah. I see nothing yeah. wrong with yeah. it. Oh, they hate this dude. This video is brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com, ladies and gentlemen, get your brand new Trump on the Chump shirt. <laughs> Our graphic designer be coming up with jewels. Trump on a Trump on the Chump shirt. Uh, 30% off. We're doing 30% to Christmas. So this is your time to buy from my store. If you ain't never bought before, 30% off to Christmas. You don't need a discount code. You don't need none of that stuff. As soon as you go to check out, it'll automatically apply 30% off. Get you one of these shirts. We have them in t-shirt, hoodie, and crew necks. So get them. We got a bet going to see if this is the bet. This is going to be the best seller. I don't know. Nick think it is. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and lady, Matt Reif, which everybody has been grueling about. Uh, many of us that have watched his comedy skits before, before any of this um, alleged sexism occurred on his comedy skit, uh, domestic violence, uh, whatever they call it, occurred on his comedy skit. I watched him. He's an internet sensation, and he's really funny. And one dynamic thing that he does that most comedians don't do is that he engage with the crowd. So let me just explain this. When a person does a comedic skit, a lot of times when they go on tour, they reproduce a lot of the same jokes. And so if you're in Maryland versus somebody being in Tampa, you know, a per and I say Tampa, if you're in Baltimore versus somebody in Tampa, you're going to you may hear the same jokes, you know. So but then when they put it out on television, they just do one good skit and they put the series out and that's just one skit. But if they do the tour, you hear the same jokes around. It's the same skit. But one interesting thing that Matt does is that he engages with the crowd. So everywhere he goes, his content is not only the jokes, but the engagement in the crowd, which makes every speech different. And so therefore he has a plethora of content everywhere he go to put out. And, and that's why I think that's what makes him so viral because it's just not the reiteration of the same jokes every city. But he finally made a response, and it's the first time I've seen him respond, respond publicly to, the, to what uh, was said, and he did it on the show with Jordan Peterson. So let me go to Jordan Peterson and his interview, and I want you guys to listen to it because I thought that what he said was hilarious, and it's actually incredible. And, and what it does is that it pushes me or forces me to believe that most people are sick of this crap. Wrote a clip. Now, you said, too, that when you posted your response to the criticisms, you posted something I think that's wildly funny, by the way. And so maybe you could explain that. Basically, this, this thing happened. There was an outrage over a joke that was wildly misperceived. And that's fine. You're allowed to like or not like a joke. Totally okay. And in response to that, I posted... Every, when you get canceled or, a, or somebody is upset about a joke you tell, you're supposed to apologize. People want you to back down and shame you and, and recognize what you've done mm -hmm, wrong. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe I did anything wrong whatsoever. So... It made me really feel like the people who were offended by this were, for lack of better words, and to be quite frank, weak-minded. So I posted a photo of me on stage, thought it was a good photo, with a link at the bottom of it, and the caption was saying, if I've ever offended you with a joke I've told, here's a link to my official apology. And the link description should have been a dead giveaway. It said, click to solve your issue. And when you click on the link, it redirected you to a, a, a store, That's an funny. online store. That's funny. Click to solve your issue. That's funny. Very specific. Because it's a little ambiguous. Of course. Mm -hmm. And then you click on the link, and it redirects you to a an online storefront for special needs helmets. I thought this was very funny. And again, misconstrued. People and instinctually, again, people get triggered by subject matter than what the joke actually is. Everybody took that as I was making fun of special needs people. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have anything to say about well, you're special making needs people. fun of people claiming special needs for their emotional fragility inappropriately. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right, I'm right. saying and quite nice. You need this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way more than they do. Yeah, right. And the best part is, is that you yeah, clicked yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. I also thought that most of the outrage was happening just on Twitter and TikTok. Like Instagram is a far more personal app, I think. And so the fact that people even saw that and, and took it to other platforms, I thought was insane but also proved my point even more that 
people who don't even like my comedy or have never even heard of me saw the outrage and my response to it and went, oh, that's actually funny. Right, right, so right. So it actually right. gained me a lot of fans because yeah. most of the world, I would, I would feel confident in saying the majority of people are sick of this shit. Well, when you apologize, in principle, you signal to those people that you've kowtowed and bowed down, but you forego the opportunity to appeal to a much broader mm -hmm. realm of people, which you think would be more sensible yeah. if you were trying to protect or develop your career, the people who look at what you've done and think, oh, well, that's funny enough, so maybe I'll go check out this yeah. guy that I've never heard of. I'm sure you attracted like 10,000 fans for every person you turned off. Oh, of yeah. I, yeah. Analytically, I've, I have gained more fans than I have lost across all platforms. Even if you didn't like that, the, the domestic violence joke that I got in trouble for, which is fair. Even I think it's not the best joke I've ever written mm -hmm. at all. It's not, it's, it's probably the worst joke in the special. And that's fine. I do other things. I have plenty of other jokes that are for other people. The response being a perfect example of that. Like, even if people go, well, that's not funny, but that joke of his is. Right, right, the right. extremities are so loud and so against each other that once one group of people, whatever you want to call them, people love to make it about the left or the right yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I'm a very unpolitical person. I don't really use those terms, so they might not be correctly used here. But say the left is so outraged about something, the right instinctually goes, you're being so ridiculous about this. If you hate this, I'm gonna support this because yeah. I see nothing yeah. wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. So in doing that, they've completely balanced each other out. What do you guys think about what he said? I think Matt was correct. You know, it, it's I see this happening all the time. The left tries to cancel somebody, but then it's such an egregious act against conservative theology that conservatives embrace that person and that person becomes viral. That's just what it is. When they try to cancel uh, Kanye West, it was such an encroachment on reality and Trump support that the Republican side or the conservative side said, this is our guy. And I'm not think, I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. Sometimes Republicans and conservatives get in trouble with it. But for the most part, it, it's like Goya. When they were trying to cancel Goya, I mean, they went and sold the most that they ever sold in their life. My Pillow. when they try to cancel Mike Lindell and take him out of the stores, he sold millions of dollars worth of product after that. When Bud Light try to go woke and, and the backlash that they get from conservatives is true. And because I think that what's happening is that what the left is doing is so ridiculous that people are just sick of it. Because I don't necessarily think that Matt Reif's uh, success and, and, and support came primarily through conservatives. I think it came through a lot of people in the middle that's like, dude, this is absolutely ridiculous. This dude told a, a baseline joke that wasn't even that harsh. It wasn't even gruesome at all or nothing inflammatory. It was a light joke. And y'all trying to cancel the dude and crying over it. And most people are like, this is so ridiculous that now I'm going to go watch a special. Now I want to see more about this kid. Who is he? Now I want to support him because y'all are so ridiculous. But tell me what you think about the Matt Rife comment and also the interview between him and Jordan Peterson. We'll leave the interview in the uh, description section. So I'll see y'all in the next one. I got to get to the next video. I'm out.